Here we're going to be looking at inventory errors in the beginning and ending inventories and the effect that they would have on net income or other balance sheet accounts or income statement accounts here. And we're going to be using this periodic inventory method here for our demonstration purposes. So when we're trying to determine the inventory errors the, and how they affect the other accounts here is to set up your T, set them up in T account form and look at the flow between the various accounts here. So for example here we're going to have sales, a credit amount here as a revenue of $200,000 for the period and then with a periodic method we have this purchases account here we'd have debited that here for hundred thousand dollars for the purchases for the period and then credit it out here at the end of the period here and move it up into this periodic or this inventory account here so our purchases we have at hundred thousand dollars and what we're going to be looking at here is errors in our beginning inventory this is where we're going to have a fluctuation here but again our purchases here at hundred thousand dollars and then our ending inventory at forty thousand dollars both of those amounts here are correct but this is where we're going to have the variation here in a beginning inventory and the best way to look at uh, how the any overage in our inventory or undervalued inventory how they affect any of the accounts here is just to look at them in terms of the correct amount here. In this case, the beginning inventory, the correct amount here should be $30,000. Now we're going to look at um, where we got an overvalued inventory here at 30, $35,000 and the undervalued here at $25,000. So to determine the uh, inventory charge against those sales we have here of $200,000, all we would do is take the beginning inventory amount here, add it to the purchases here, and then subtract out our ending inventory. And this is using that periodic method. That gives us our inventory charge here. So uh, with the over a valued inventory of 35,000, we get an inventory charge here, charge it off at 95,000. Then the correct amount of our inventory would have been $90,000 here. And then where we undervalued inventory, the uh, inventory charge here is $85,000. So those just move right over into the cost of goods sold here for the, for the, for the, for those sales or those revenues of, for the period of $200,000. So our, with our overvalued inventory, again, our cost of goods sold here, 95000 Correct amount here, 90000 Undervalued inventory, cost of goods sold at $85,000. So now we have to look at our net income. How does it affect our net income? Well, we have um, cost of goods sold, or we have the revenue for the period here at $200,000. And then we would be subtracting out our, just moving our cost of goods sold over here uh, based on our over overvalued inventory, the correct amount here and then the undervalued inventory. So looking at our overvalued inventory, our cost of goods sold was $95,000 and subtracting that here from our revenue for the period of $200,000 gives us the, a net income here of $105,000. So you can see here we overvalued invent, where we had overvalued inventory here, we're going to have undervalued net income. Now again, uh, our correct amount here is $90,000. So just moving that down here uh, or subtracting our, our correct amount here from our gross, our sales here of $200,000 gives us the correct amount here of $110,000. And then where we have undervalued inventory here, subtracting that here from the $200,000 worth of sales, the $85,000 undervalued gives us $115,000 worth of net income where it's overvalued. So you can see right here where we've got overvalued inventory, we're going to have an undervalued net income. And where we got uh, undervalued inventory here, we're going to have overvalued net income. So you can see how they work in the opposite direction. And then again, just remember that these are net income here would go into our retained earnings and affect it in the same value fashion here. So you got overvalued inventory, you're going to have undervalued retained earnings. And then one other th uh, looking here at uh, just taking uh, for example here our working capital. So save our current assets that equals our current assets minus our current liabilities here. So if inventories are understated as a current asset then the working capital would be understated and, and etc. here. So anything uh, remember that the 
uh, inventory here affects our working capital and you'd have to do your arithmetic here to see whether the working capital is either understated or overstated or you have uh, less or more working capital here and then one other thing here so looking at this purchases account here so if uh, the purchases here were understated or overstated you would have this would have the same effect here as our beginning inventory error here so uh, with this uh, periodic method here the purchases account here would also affect our um, charge against our net income if there's any errors here in our purchases account. So next we'll be looking at errors in the ending inventory and how they would affect our net income. Now let's look at inventory errors in the ending inventory account. So what we have here is we're going to have an inventory account here for the prior year X1 and the ending inventory in the prior year X1 gets carried over to the beginning inventory here in the current year X2. So going back to our prior year's inventory, ending inventory, we're going to have an undervalued inventory amount here, the correct amount here, and then the overvalued inventory amount. So as it gets transferred over here to the inventory in the current year it becomes the beginning inventory of the current year. So we just repeat the process that we have done before here. Uh, taking the beginning inventory amount here adding back uh, the purchases for the period $100,000 and subtracting the ending inventory account here of $50,000. We get the inventory that we'd be charging off against that, those sales for the period here. And I've got them listed here. Now that inventory that we were charging off here uh, for their sales gets uh, a debited here or increased or recognized as our cost of goods sold here. So for our uh, undervalued inventory, I got a cost of goods sold here of $85,000. For the correct amount here, it's $90,000. And then for the overvalued inventory, the cost of goods sold here is $95,000. Now to calculate our net income based on uh, our uh, sales revenue here of $200,000 and our cost of goods sold expense here that I've just calculated. So you, we, what we're going to do here is just take our our uh, sales amount here of $200,000 and let's just say we subtract out our correct invent or cost of goods sold here of $90,000 that gives us a correct inventory or a correct net income here of $110,000 for the period. So now let's go and take a look at our uh, undervalued inventory the cost of goods sold for that so that was eighty five thousand dollars subtract that here from the two hundred thousand uh, dollar sales amount we get our net income of a hundred and fifteen thousand dollars compare that to the correct amount here of a hundred and ten thousand dollars you can see that our net income here is overvalued based on an undervalued uh, cost of goods sold or inventory amount here now just Taking the other case here where we got overvalued inventory here at $95,000 as our cost of goods sold, netting it against the $200,000 worth of sale, we get um, net income here of $105,000, which is undervalued here compared to the correct amount here of $110,000. So the point is here when you're, uh, where you got your inventory that's undervalued, it gets uh, our net income would be overvalued. And in the case where you got your um, inventory or your cost of goods sold here where it says overvalued, uh, it's, uh, the net income here would be undervalued. And then again for our retained earnings, that has the same effect here because you're just moving your net income into your retained earnings. So in this case you'd have the same amounts here for your over and under uh, values here for your net income that's moved over here into the retained earnings. Now let's look at the counterbalancing effect on this inventory error between year one and year two and we're going to be looking at it in terms of our net income and how they counterbalance each other. So the, we're going to look at the case here for, where we have undervalued inventory here for both year one and year two. So when we go down and let's do our calculations here for our net income here for uh, year one here where we got the undervalued inventory here of $35,000, our ending inventory. So if we do our arithmetic here, we're going to come with, up with net income here of $95,000. So we have understated inventory. We're going to have understated net income here. So let's look at the, again, for year one here, if we uh, calculate the correct amount here, our ending inventory was $40,000. And uh, with our arithmetic, we're going to come up with in 
net income here of $100,000. So comparing the correct amount here of $100,000 to our understated amount here of $95,000 with that understated inventory, we're going to have a uh, def difference here or, or understated amount here of $5,000 in net income on our income statement. Now let's look at year two here again where we have the understated uh, inventory amount here. And uh, with the understated inventory amount here, over, we have over, overstated net income. So our, our, over, our overstated net income in this case was $115,000. So you take the overstated amount here of $115,000 less the correct amount. Again, we're looking at the correct amount. The correct amount here was $110,000. Taking the difference between the two here, you're going to come up with overstated net income here of $5,000. So you have the understated amount here of net income of $5,000. That cancels out with the over, uh, understated income here for year one here of $5,000. Uh, cancels out here with the overstated net income here for year two of $5,000. So they counterbalance each, uh, each uh, they counterbalance each other out here based on that understated uh, inventory that we calculated uh, based on that. So uh, it, the effect of the error on the net income here for year one will be counterbalanced with year two. But the income statement misstates both years one and years two and that must be corrected 